Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This channel is dedicated to answering key questions that you have related to electrical and life safety. Today, I'm going to be talking about integrated system test plans. And that's something that you see required. NFPA 4 testing is required in a lot of life safety codes, building codes, fire codes, or things like that, starting from the 2018 edition of those codes. So I'm gonna talk about what an integrated system test plan is, and I'm gonna use NFPA link to go through those requirements. So first, I'm on my homepage here, I'm gonna to go to NFPA 4, which is the standard for integrated fire protection and life safety system testing. I'm gonna go ahead and go through general requirements. If you click through the table of contents, you see that it's got specifically a section on test plan. And I wanna talk a little bit about the integrated system testing team. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on chapter four. So we see that integrated testing applies to both new and existing systems. I wanna talk about integrated system testing team. So at a minimum, the integrated test team needs to consist of an integrated testing agent and the installation testing and maintenance personnel for each integrated system. So I'm gonna talk most specifically about the integrated testing agent because that's the person who is responsible for creating the test plan. So if we look down here, the integrated testing agent is responsible for planning, scheduling, documenting, coordinating, and implementing the integrated testing for the fire protection and life safety systems. And finally here, this is like the, the big requirement, the integrated testing agent needs to prepare that test plan. So what is the test plan that we're talking about? And this is a test plan that needs to be completed to make sure that all of our integrated fire protection and life safety systems are gonna be working properly. And when I say integrated life safety systems and fire protection systems, one of the most common examples that you might have would be the fire alarm system and the elevator. Maybe we'll add in a kitchen hood suppression system as well. So say we have a kitchen hood suppression system, that's gotta send a signal to the fire alarm. And the fire alarm might, you know, then initiate an alarm condition or, or something of that sort, which could cause the elevators to recall. And depending how everything's programmed, we need to make sure all of that's gonna work properly. Or maybe we have another input, which might be a water flow switch on a, a sprinkler system. Now, a lot of those in design and installation and ITM standards don't go past the system itself. So specifically for the fire alarm system, if I've got outputs, I'm only required to test the output of that relay. I don't have to make sure that the system that's being triggered is actually doing the proper thing. So that's where the integrated testing comes into place to make sure that from end to end, all of my fire protection and life safety systems are working properly. Now for a test plan, this is for new systems. Um, but again, we see down here for existing systems, the integrated test plan shall include the items listed above and then to allow the test team to verify the integrated systems function as required when initially installed. So I also have to do this for existing systems as well. So I need to have written verification that the integrated system and its individual systems have been installed in accordance with the approved design documents. And again, if this is an existing system, then I might need to you know, find some of that documentation. I need to list the in individual systems that need to be tested. I have to have documentation of the in individual systems as required by the applicable codes or standards. So that's a lot of the acceptance testing documentation or maybe the design documentation as well. The integrated test team and individual entities required to be in attendance. So who's on my test team? Who needs to be there to do the testing? What equipment do I need to perform the testing? A comprehensive functional matrix depicting all of the inputs and outputs of the system. So for the most part, this is going to come from the fire alarm system, the input output matrix from that fire alarm system showing what inputs and what outputs occur for that specific input. That's the crux of integrated testing. It's making sure that that input output matrix is working properly, where everything is working as per the input output matrix. Now a list of necessary drawings, including any riser diagrams, control diagrams of all those systems, a narrative, description of all the test scenarios that I'm, I'm going to be completing for that test. So maybe I'm going to be triggering a smoke 
detector in an elevator lobby and I'm gonna do that on multiple floors and what what's the output I'm gonna be looking for on all those and what's all the inputs that I'm gonna be testing. The extent of the systems to be tested under the direction of the integrated testing agent and then a test schedule. So how, you know, what's the schedule of all this testing gonna look like? And then finally, how often do I need to be performing these integrated system tests? And depending on how complex these buildings are, it might be, you know, every year, every two years, it could go, you know, up to every 10 years or so, but that's up to integrated testing agents discretion as they're writing this test plan, because they're the person who's knowledgeable and experienced in all these systems and how they work together. So that's a general description of what a test plan needs to look like, you know, created by the integrated testing agent. If you want to learn more about, you know, integrated system testing, or if you want to do more research on a lot of NFPA codes and standards, you can use NFPA link to do that. And if you want to use NFPA link or learn more about NFPA link to complete your job, you can go ahead and visit nfpa.org link.